Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Morgan from My Little Homeschool in the Woods. Today I'm going to be showing you how I bind my Gather Around You Knits, so stay tuned. So I'm finally going to show you guys how I bind our gather round units. I bought um, Living Off the Land, which is their latest unit, and I went ahead and printed off the teacher's guide. So I got it printed off, and I'm just going to show you guys how I put everything together and what I use. So here we go. Alright guys, so here is my teacher's guide all printed off. Um, I do the front and the back cover in cardstock, which is just the regular cardstock. It's not like anything special and then I laminate those and then you know they're protected because you know eventually we will probably be doing the unit again so I'd like to have the teacher's guide um, all ready and to go so front and back I will laminate those and for my laminator I just use um, this cheap one I don't even know how to say it I got off Amazon it's been working great um, if you do not have a laminator you need to get one it, it took me years to get one, and they're awesome. So, and for the hole punching, I use this um, Swingline GBC Pro Click P50. Um, it's just basically a hole punch. You put your paper in, and then you punch a bunch of holes in it. So, um, if you want one of these, I suggest if you're trying to save money, um, looking on eBay, which is where I got mine. I got mine almost half the price of a new one. So, um, you never know, you could get lucky and um, find one cheaper if you're wanting to invest in one of these. I really like it, it's very heavy duty, um, and so far I've had no issues with it, it works great. So, this is what we are using for that. And I just have um, some regular Amazon laminating pouches, um, it's just their basic ones. I don't remember the mill on these, but I just use the regular Amazon ones. So use those. And for the actual binder, I get these from. Let's see. I bought these off eBay. If I can get this to focus, the coil 16 millimeter spiral binding coils, and this is a hundred pack. These are the ones that do um, 130 sheets, I believe. And they work pretty good. I think they're the four to one. No wait, yeah, they're the four to one pitch. We actually probably need the three to one because that goes by how many holes per inch, like four to you know four holes per inch or three holes per inch. We actually probably need the three to one, but these are cheaper and um, they seem to work just fine. And um, so I just buy these, and I've got a lot of them. Probably not going to need to buy them for a long time. But if I can find some, I will try to link some down below. Um, there's just so many different ones that you can get. Um, they have them on Amazon too, but i just been buying them off eBay. So, but anyway, that's what I get for that because um, you can get the ProClick spines, but for some reason they're just, they seem to be going way up in price and I just don't like them as well as the coil. So, the only downfall is, um, you know, you can't just take these off and edit and stuff like that but yeah that is my supplies that I have for binding so now I'm going to show you how I do it all right so first off I laminate the front and the back and so I'm just going to show real quick how I do that in case you've never laminated before I'm just going to show the process really fast if I can get this open so you just use your little sleeve, stick it in like so. All right, move over here. All right, so I've already got my laminator all ready, so I'm just gonna feed it through real easy, like this. Mm -hmm. So it catches on, and then it feeds through. All right, I got my front and back cover all laminated. So what I have to do next is just um, trim off some of this um, excess. I don't need all of that. So I'm gonna take the scissors and just kind of trim these up and get them ready to be hole punched. So.
All right, so I got everything ready to be hole punched. I got my front and back covers that need to be hole punched, and then I have my my stack of papers here. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and hole punch these. I have a there's a little notch here at this side. I always put everything toward that notch. I push it down to where it's on there. You don't have to move it around. And um, as soon as I get that where I need it to be, all I gotta do is... And I have my holes punched. So I've got the cover. Now the back, I gotta make sure I do it on the right side because I want this showing on the back. So I just put it in this way. And push it down towards that little notch and go. So I got my front and my back all ready to go. Now on to all the papers. Now this is 28 pound paper so you can only do about three pages at a time. If it's normal paper like 20 pounds you could do, um, do a lot more. But it's not. So I just take about three at a time, line them all up, push it down towards that notch, and then just go. Doesn't take as long as it seems like it takes. Seems like it would take forever, but just, just like so. Push it down, make sure it's straight, and go. And I flip them over so my book is all ready when I'm done. Just keep going through them. So I got everything hole punched. I've got it all laid out the way it needs to go. I just gotta straighten up the pages and then I have to get my spine worked through. And yeah, we're almost done. It's gonna be so pretty. All right, so the last step is to get the spine worked through. So it takes a little bit because they're not the right size. Kind of work, have to work it a little bit and like scooch it up. And then you just kind of. Now, this spine is for 130 sheets, so it should be plenty big enough. And you just kind of have to work it into each hole, just like that. Take it all the way to the end. Chloe is my camera girl today, so everybody give Chloe some love in the comments. <laughs> All right, so almost got it. And then we just have to cut off the ends and then crimp them so it doesn't come off. Alright, that is our book. All I gotta do is cut off the excess and then I'm gonna crimp these ends and then we'll have our teacher's guide. Alright, so I gotta cut off the excess. So you just take your scissors and I just take it right at the edge, chop that off. And then I take my pliers and then I'm gonna crimp the end really good so I don't want it to come off and our book just like that alright guys so this is the finished product when I get everything done um, all the ends crypt um, Everything is good to go, and I can just store this away till we're ready to use it. And it looks really nice, and um, you know, I'm not having a bunch of 
binders all over the place holding all my teacher's books. I can just stick this on the shelf and yeah, this is how I have it set up. Um, you can do it any way you want. Um, if you, you know, if you're on a budget, go get you some flex binders. Um, th those work really well. I have done that before. Last year I used flex binders for our um, human body unit. But yeah, if you have the extra money to invest in, want it to look a little bit nicer, um, this is a really good setup. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it was helpful. And if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.